What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and some more Bolt action. So we're coming back and taking a look at the most recent, or one of the most recent campaign books here, and that's the D-Day U.S. sector. So over the last year or so, Bolt, uh, Bolt action, specifically about Warlord, you know, has done a good job of really bringing out more and more content uh, across all kinds of different theaters for the game, but really uh, putting a, a lot of serious effort into expanding sort of your horizons, your gaming horizons, your hobby horizons with D-Day. And so we've seen, you know, all the different sectors, essentially. Now we got basically the U.S. sector. And so this is another one of the little bit beefier uh, campaign books. I know some of them are a little thinner, but this is towards the, the thicker end of them. So there's definitely going to be a lot of good content in here for us. And as we've done in our other campaign uh, sort of intro review uh, looks here, um, basically we're going to just kind of rather briskly flip, flip through and kind of point out the major things for you guys here, but also just, you know, some of the, the reasons to pick these up and... Uh, sort of the, the, the nice value of these. So uh, in separate series, because um, we do have uh, a lot of these campaign books, so we're going to then spend some time looking at, um, you know, the individual things in a little bit more detail. So what do we get in the book here? So as always, these um, these campaign books add quite a few new scenarios here. So um, in this one, looks like it's a little bit less than uh, others, but that's all right. We're getting just focusing on one specific sector here. So it looks like 12 new scenarios so and then as always we'll get new units on both sides here or multiple sides and some theater selectors and other stuff as well so again it's just always adding more ways and more things to the game more ways to play so we start off with road to carantan then bocage country which is uh, just a fun uh game type of game in and of itself if you have the right terrain for it uh behind the lines and then keeping supply lines alive are the big sections there so let's jump right in we got some more back here too so again more more just new stuff here right um so for the germans the allies all kinds of goodies here and then more special rules so you always get more things more ways to play the game so um, as always warlord starts off with a little bit of history and then we jump into the first sector here so road to carantan again kind of a background and then our first scenario here so and again, if you're tired of, you know, regular uh, bolt action as far as like just the, you know, the, the standard missions from the main book and stuff, you really do owe it to yourself to try at least one of these campaign books. There are just so many new things to play, new hobby opportunities as far as terrain and things go. So really, um, there's, the sky is kind of the limit here. So again, aftermath of the battles, moving on to the next. So here we got what is Purple Heart Lane. And, you know, as I said, so if you're getting bored with any of the scenarios just dip into one of these uh campaign books just depending on what your you know your gaming group has so you know if you play a lot of western front obviously d-day is probably something you want to um, look at at some point eastern front well there's plenty of things there um you know we've seen a lot for the pacific recently so you know if your gaming group has a lot of sort of like u.s marine players um uh, Japanese players, uh, things like that, uh, just perfect things to go for there. Uh, we got Bloody Gulch here, and then kind of the aftermath of that section. So then we move on to maintaining the line of logistics, or lines of logistics. Again, a little bit of background as sort of the post-D-Day fighting commenced. So uh, Lightning Joe, Joe and Cherbourg, so another fun one there. Moving into the Bocage country, so again hedgerows and just fun stuff there ruins of course fighting for san low um you get villers bocage i believe in here as well so if you want to sort of reenact uh, whitman's sort of moment of glory there um operation cobra um and chances are too i mean even if you're already you know uh somewhat of a a history buffer certainly into the period and this this type of gaming chances are you're going to find things that maybe you didn't know as much about um and then you know that makes it interesting to try and game it um as well so oops so then we get to the end of that then behind the lines fighting here so and here we already get again some newer things your units to test out and again that always presents some fun new hobby and modeling opportunities there some new stuff to paint up so if you want to try out like french resistance forces and stuff like that too another fun thing to collect so 
So then onward to the Rhine. And of course, there's other later campaign books that really can take you all the way up through Berlin and everything, and just, you know, the final fighting on the Western Front, Bastogne and stuff like that. So um, then we get into the new units. So here uh, we get chaplains and intelligence officers, support officers, gun commanders, forward observer stuff, artillery barrage charts. So all these things you can certainly also... Uh, sort of, you know, the more campaign books you get into, you can start mixing and matching some of the things there and just kind of really creating your own unique and custom game experiences, too. So um, so if nothing else, uh, again, it's just worth looking at for a lot of times just the new ideas that can sort of start percolating there as far as getting more hobby inspiration, right? Um, again, really, you should never run out of ideas or new things to try and play. Uh, anyway, French Partisans, new units there. So we got uh, Maquis squads, the Jedberg team, a little bit of color background there. Molotov anti-tank squad, sounds fun. New units for the U.S. here. Heavy weapons, rifle detachments, armored infantry rifle squads, mortar squads, all kinds of fun stuff. Generally, these books will include uh, sort of historical characters, or typically would say you know special characters in the game. But so we got Lieutenant John Butts, uh, Walter Ehlers, on to some German units here, double agents, uh, Kriegsmarine officers, a little background on Kriegsmarine uh, ranks, LMG teams. Paris Alert Security Squad, Alert Battalion Paris Squad, Panzer 1 Austro Seas. So, repurposing some early war vehicles there. Horse wagons. And then, on to some theater selectors. So, again, we got Bloody Gulch reinforced platoons. Just all kinds of stuff here just to follow along with the different scenarios. And again, just fun to try out in their own rights here. Armored Rifle Companies, Cavalry Recon Troops, Partisans, and all kinds of fun stuff there. Again, always uh, some great artwork and stuff in the books here as well. Pack 40, just awesome stuff here. New German th selectors here, Late War Anti-Tank Company, Panzer Grenadier Heavy Company, their Vintund Grenadier Company. I hadn't actually heard about that before, so that will be a fun one to read. Defenders of Cherbourg. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, Defenders of Cherbourg Reinforced Platoons. It's the 325 Seahawks Division. Army Rangers lead the way. So Ranger Officer, even. That's pretty cool. A little bit of background on Rangers of D-Day, so you know if you've seen Banner Brothers and other stuff like that, um, you know, you can jump right in with these things here. Ranger chaplains, Ranger medics, so basically a full-on Ranger force, basically. Late War Ranger assault section, special weapons sections, all kinds of goodies here. Lieutenant Colonel William Darby, Albert E. Basil, and then some more theater selectors. So interestingly here, Mid-War Rangers Company, North Africa and Italy. Late War Rangers Mortar Company, that seems interesting too. Late War Ranger Company itself. Heck, we're even talking about stuff in the Philippines here. Tip of the Spear, we'll get Airborne, of course. So basically, what we just spoke about for um, Rangers, basically getting a really awesomely detailed ranger or sorry uh, airborne force with all kinds of new goodies there and then hey the sas let's not forget about them as well oh some other stuff here so the wacko cg4 um so elite spearheads interesting there all right anyway uh sas in france so again all kinds of crazy sas shenanigans and goodies there 
So if you're a fan of the Brits, you're not forgotten in this book. So even though this is, again, the U.S. Um, sector book, right, there's stuff for French in here. Um, there's stuff for the Brits in here. So it's never, um, don't feel like any one of these campaign books is sort of uh, limiting you to just a very, um, again, limited game experience. There's so many things in here. Um, you know, moving on to uh, Falschermeager. Yeah, new units and stuff here. Basically the full-on Falschermeager force. The Lions of Carantan. That sounds interesting there. Ten, Ten Commandments of the Falschermeager. So again, lots of extra, all these little um, side notes and stuff here that they have. Um, just really great blurbs on, um, you know, the, the forces involved and things like that. So some special characters and other things here for the Falschermeager. Feldfebel Max Kassakert. Um, interesting. Nicknamed Der Panzerknacker. Nice. Good old pack 40. And let's not forget these guys. So again, they get their own custom force in here as well. So if you want to try out the Guts von Berlichen division, you can have that in here. Head, you can do all your fun hedgerow ambushing. Plenty of that represented here. And finally, special rules, so we'll touch on these a little bit, right? So custom rules for Bocage now, fortifications, minefields, and again, um, some of these would be in, you know, older books and other related books like that. But again, this is definitely, you know, sort of the newest version of that stuff. So, you know, very much up-to-date um, rules, and sometimes they'll be, you know, essentially the same from other books. But again, that just shows that you can take these ideas and then, um, apply them in other areas as well. But anyway, fortifications, we got minefield rules, given the nature of some of the forces here, like the, the French resistance, um, all kinds of different minefield stuff. Digging in. Digging in for vehicles, going haul down and all that. Basically ambushing with vehicles, hidden setup and all that fun stuff. Awesome art there. Rules for rubble. How that impacts infantry and vehicles. Some optional rules here. So engineer demo charges should just be main rules, I think, right? Um, engineers, of course, use that. And then finally, the end of the book. So this one is topping in at basically 100, and, uh, if we include the credits, basically at the end, 160 pages. So lots and lots of stuff for you guys here. So again, this is just a quick tour through this. But again, if you play US, Germans, Brits, and, and or French, right? There is something in here for you. So this is, again, fantastic checkout. And again, if you have all the different D-Day campaign books now, um, I mean, you can, you know, the sky is really the limit as far as your, your what you can rec recreate. So I know in the past, uh, from groups I've been in, we've literally recreated, you know, the, like, Omaha Beach Landing and then other bits and pieces there and then kind of followed some of these um, scenario type of scenarios um, and even custom things before, um, you know, like this book, for example, was out. Just creating lots and lots of fun, unique opportunities. And, you know, um, you can start, if you want, you know, string these things together into like a campaign where you have, you know, maybe larger games, but then, you know, moving on to individual one-on-one um, -on -one type games and things like that and just seeing where the, the battles and everything take you. So, again, as always, cannot recommend these enough. They're, they're just fantastic books, well worth picking up. And, again, just to give you some new hobby ideas, new inspiration, and, uh, again, all this new stuff's worth checking out. So if there's any one knock against this, it's just that um, I know there's uh, there could be some more new releases, essentially, to coincide with the book as far as just new, new kits, new units, and things like that, maybe some re-releases in plastic or uh, Warlord Resin or something like that. But um, that's, again, just minor, minor gripes there. So um, personal feeling is, you know, anytime a book comes out, we should definitely kind of get some other kits and stuff to sort of, again, go along with those, uh, all, all the good ideas that are presented in the book here, right? So it's always nice to have some new kits and stuff to work on as well. But again, minor gripes. In a lot of cases, you might already have a lot of the stuff that you need anyway. So anyway, well worth checking out, guys. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on 
the various D-Day um, sectors, but also specifically this one. And have you tried anything out yet from here? Uh, overall thoughts on forces, units, and uh, other rules and stuff presented in here. Uh, leave us, a, again, comments there. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, check out the link in the description if you guys do want to support us a little bit more. Um, that would uh, also be appreciated. And otherwise, we will see you in the next one, guys. Take care.